In this third unit of the first chapter of uh, the Contemporary Architecture course, we will see the work of Rafael Moneo. Rafael Moneo, considered one of the most prominent architects of our time, focused on three different fields in his uh, career in architecture. He's a practitioner and he has built projects in many places around the world, mainly in Europe and in uh, the United States. He's an architectural writer and critique, so he has widely published, lectured and spoken uh, about uh, architecture. He's also an academic. Rafael Moneo started his academic career in Barcelona. He taught there for 10 years history and theory. He moved back to Madrid and opened his uh, office there. And uh, in 1985, he was appointed a chair of the Graduate School of Design at Harvard <laughs> University, uh, where he was chair for uh, five years. He's still a professor at Harvard University, and I'm honored to have been his uh, student. In fact, the course in contemporary architecture that you see now is a course that similar to a course that he's teaching at Harvard at the moment. The work of Rafael Moneo is known for being very specific with the context and being able to respond to very specific conditions in the place where it is built. He also has a very important uh, relationship and reference to time. Rafael Moneo says that architecture doesn't happen in time. Time happens in architecture. That is why in all his projects we can see the importance of time. We can see the compression of time. Rafael Moneo is known for his design of public buildings. One of the first projects that I would like to show you is the Miró Foundation in Palma de Mallorca, designed in 1987 and completed in 1992. The building is on one of the hills of uh, the city. Rafael Moneo uh, spoke in relationship to uh, his architecture, saying, to build means to intervene in the environment, in the landscape in which we live it, as much as to construct a building. Therefore, the building which we have here has to do with the creation of a place, has to do with the creation of a new landscape in which the building positions itself and establishes a prominent public space. The building is comprised of, of two parts, one linear uh, prismatic volume, which serves as the entrance, the public spaces and uh, hosts the research labs, the library and the uh, small auditorium. We walk through these publics through this prismatic volume on the side of the hill so we don't have any views to the sea on the other side. The building in a way prepares us through this promenade in the exterior next to a large concrete wall to clear our mind for what the work of art of uh, Miro will be in the interior. Once we pass the threshold of the entrance, we are brought into this large balcony with views to the landscape, with views to the sea. Moneo spoke about the relationship with the context. Sharp and intense, the volume ignores its surrounding or, better still, answers with rage the hostile buildings that have worn down the previous beautiful slope. We see these, the second part of the building, which hosts the galleries with this very uh, dynamic angular geometry, very uh, aggressive from the exterior, but at the same time creating unique spaces in the interior. We walk uh, down the gallery and we are surprised in this space where the uh, staircase lands and leads us into uh, different corridors of the exhibit. The building itself produces us through this promenade, but the promenade itself is not quite clear from the beginning. We really have to discover and explore the building as we walk through it. As we go down um, and on these ramps and staircases, the exhibit reveals uh, to ourselves. All the windows in the exhibition part are placed in the lower part of the galleries. Therefore, we cannot see any of the buildings in the surroundings. We only see glimpses of the garden, glimpses of the uh, nature 
designed by the architect in the exterior. The light in the interior is filtered through the alabaster stone on the upper part of the windows and provide this uh, filtered and very mild light on the paintings. As we go through the building, we are conduced through the final corridors and halls and taken uh, in the exterior. There we find the garden and Monet commented on that. The visitor following the entry path will be surprised to, be, to find a beautiful ample square. From here he can go on to explore the garden. The garden and the plaza at the end of the exhibit are a way for uh, every visitor to reflect on the work that is that they have seen in the interior to absorb it in their mind and to go back into the real world. Another project that uh, I would like to mention is the Cursa Auditorium and Convention Center in San Sebastian from 1991 and completed in 1999. It starts with this very abstract idea of two volumes that are placed on the edge of, of the ocean. It belongs both to the city and to the ocean. That is why the scale of the volumes is the scale of a city block but takes the shape of the wave breakers from the beach. He was very much influenced by the work of a Basque sculptor Jorge Oteiza who cut stone and folded steel into these very irregular shapes where we don't have right angles. All the angles are, are transformed and they create this unique tension between the void space and the field space of the stone. Monel designed the building with uh, two auditoriums, larger and smaller one. The auditoriums are built with concrete shells in the interior and with a glass facade in the exterior. We have two layers of the skin. The first one, the glass, which relates to the city, relates to the beach and to the sunlight absorbs and transforms the sunlight because of its curvilinear uh, facade reflecting uh, the ocean and the sunlight. The interior made with concrete shell isolates from the sound of the city and provides a perfect environment and acoustics for a concert. The building has only one window which allows us to see the exterior from the inside of the building. In fact, uh, being next to the ocean, we would expect someone to place larger windows where we can admire the view, but the building as such as an auditorium had to be rather introverted, had to be able to isolate and clear people's minds. The public space within the building is placed between the uh, concrete shell and the glass windows. That's a place of public appearance and public encounter. The interior itself is very dynamic and has uh, these um, shapes which on one side help to break the sound and to optimize acoustics. On the other side they provide this very interesting visual effect and dynamic perception of uh, the interior space. The building provides this memorable place an image of the city. Anyone who goes to see San Sebastian would remember the Cursa, would remember the views both during the day and at night and the special effect that it has for the city and for the edge of the ocean. Another building which I would like to mention is the Catholic Cathedral in Los Angeles in California. The building was designed in 1996 and completed in 2002. The project is very much inspired by the Ronchamp Church by Le Corbusier in the northeast of France. Both projects have this idea of procession approaching the building uh, through a path and going through this threshold that leads us through the, to the interior. Once we get there, we go through this very big, massive bronze 
door that opens to the large corridor that leads us to the back of the cathedral. The cathedral doesn't reveal itself to us immediately as many other uh, churches would do. Once we go through, we enter this magical space from the back and we see the spectacle of lights in the interior, the, the tapestries on the side, the very um, angular geometry and the altar on the back of the church. We see the organ above the entrance. We see the light coming from the side in between uh, the single chapels. And in the end we discover the light again filtered through this alabaster stone with going through a window with the shape of the cross. After seeing the interior, we are conduced through this very narrow and dark space to the exit. Once we go out into the world, we are changed, we are transformed, and we see the world in a different space. The building and the procession that we make through the building itself are very spiritual act. Whether we are religious or not, going through this space, we are already moved by it, we are already touched by this ineffable space that brings us to another reality and brings us to another state of mind. The works that we'll see by Rafael Moneo in this course are two buildings, uh, one in New York and one in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The first project is LICE, Laboratory of Integrated Science and Engineering at Harvard University. You'll see that uh, building in the, our next unit. The second one is the Columbia Science Labs or the Northwest building on the Columbia campus. We will discuss these case studies and we'll analyze them according to the concepts that we introduced in the chapter of uh, Critical Regionalism and Globalization. If you want to look further at the work of Rafael Monel, I would invite you to look at the text that I have posted on the course website or do your own research on the internet. You can find some videos, lectures, interviews of him also on the course website and you can do some online research for others. If you have access to a library uh, with books of architecture, I'm sure you will find a book on him or by him, so I uh, highly encourage you to um, find it and to read it and to study his work. He's an architect that has taught many other architects, so you will also have a lot of interest in uh, understanding his work and you can apply some of his ideas into your research, into your further studies, or if you're a student or an architect, into your own work.